ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلالة في النار وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر والها وانما توعدون لات وما انتم بمعجزين My brothers and sisters no doubt our lives are very difficult we live in difficult times every single one of us has some situation all of us are being tested and tried in various ways everyone has a test in a trial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some people in the world in other countries like our brothers and sisters in Syria are being tested and tried in very frightening ways we ask Allah to make their situation easier we ask Allah to relieve them of their misery and we ask Allah to destroy the, their enemies and the tyrants who are oppressing their people there and everywhere throughout the world and all of us in our situations have trials and tribulations some of us are tested by the death or the deaths of our loved ones some of us are being tested by the illness of ourselves or our loved ones in these times one of the islamic teachings that gets trumped that gets put on the side that we tend to ignore when we go through trials and tribulations is a very important teaching and i wanted to highlight that in a few moments today It's something very basic and it's something very important. But when we look at the difficulties around us sometimes we forget that. And that is the teaching of ash-shukr, of gratitude, being grateful to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes it's counterintuitive you think to yourself when you're being tested, when things are difficult, when things are seem to be going wrong, why should we be grateful to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala? My brothers and sisters, A shukr is one of the most important Islamic teachings. It's something that makes up our iman. Ibn al-Qayyim he says it is one half of our iman. One half of our faith is being grateful, showing an attitude of gratitude to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it doesn't matter what situation you're in. So it's something very very important. Allah commands it repeatedly in the Quran. Washkuru lillahi in kuntum iyyahu ta'budun. Allah says be grateful to Allah. If indeed you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how many verses ends with la'allakum tashkurun Allah gives us various commands at the end la'allakum tashkurun the purpose of those so that we may be grateful so my brothers and sisters we need to be grateful we need to engender shukr and gratitude in our lives it doesn't matter what situation you're in how diff- it doesn't matter how difficult your life is all of us need to be grateful there are so many blessings of Allah that we enjoy I wanted to share a moving moment from the life of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam one of my favorite narrations something that paints a beautiful picture of how the Prophet lived and it's related to gratitude it's perhaps one of the most emotional and beautiful narrations about the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam two of the tabi'in Ubayd ibn Umair and Ata ibn Abi Rabah there were students of Aisha radiyallahu anha and Ibn Abbas and other companions so one day and this is in the lifetime is this is after the prophet had passed away 
one day they decided, and they were great scholars. Ubayd ibn Umayr was a great scholar of Mecca, who was known to have very eloquent tongue. He was known to move people to tears. And even people like Ibn Umar, the companion, used to sit in the halaqat of Ubayd ibn Umayr. So one day they wanted to revive their iman. One day they decided, you know, we need to revive our hearts. So they said, let's visit our mother. Let's visit Aisha radiallahu anha. She was still alive. Let's visit the mother of the believers. So they visited Aisha. They entered in her house. And there were also her students. They narrated from her. She taught them. And when they entered, Aisha radiallahu anha, she hadn't seen them in a while. They're her students. She said to them, قَدْ آنَ لَكَ أَن تَزُورَنَا She asked them, why are you visiting after such a long time? Ubayd ibn Umayr, he said, and he was a man, as I mentioned, he was eloquent. He had a, a, a thing with words. He said, Ya Ummah, kama qal al awwal, zur ghibban tazdad hubban. He said, Oh mother, it's as, it's, it's as, as the poets say, or as they say, zur ghibban tazdad hubban, that you visit people infrequently and your love will increase. But if you're in front of people all the time, they get annoyed and then there's less love. In English, there's a saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder. It's the same saying. So Aisha, she said to them, you know, da'una min ratanatikum hadihi. Leave all this fancy talk of yours, get to the point. So Ubaid and Ata, they said to Aisha radiallahu anha, they didn't come to learn fiqh, they didn't come to learn a lot of, you know, hardcore knowledge. They said, akhbirina. بِأَعْجَبِ شَيْءٍ رَأَيْتِهِ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ They said, tell us one thing. We're here for one thing. Tell us the most amazing thing that you remember from the life of the Messenger of Allah. صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ She became emotional. What a loaded question. They just wanted to know one thing. Just one memory from the Prophet. So she was silent for a while and then she began telling them the story of one night. So she told them the story, It was one night, in the middle of the night. And the Prophet was in my house. And he got up. And when he got up, I got up as well. And he said, Ya Aisha, darini ata'abbad li Rabbi. He said, Oh Aisha, I need some time alone. Leave me to worship my Lord. So Aisha, she said to him, Wallahi inni la uhibbu qurbak wa uhibbu ma yasurru. She said, there's nothing I love more than being close to you, but I also love what makes you happy. So she left him alone, and then she described what happened next. She said he got up, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made wudu, and he began to pray. And she said he began to pray salah, two rak'ahs. And she said in his salah he began to cry. And she said that he continued crying. فَلَمْ يَزِلْ يَبْكِي حَتَّى بَلَّ حِجْرَهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ She said, I saw him, she was watching him, in the middle of the night, praying, you know, tahajjud. And he's crying, and she said he continued crying until I noticed all his cheeks were wet with his tears. صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ She said he continued crying and crying until I noticed then his beard began soaked and started dripping. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his tears. And she said he continued crying throughout the night. Then I noticed the ground beneath him began to be wet. And the ground that he was standing on, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was soaked with his tears. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then she said it was close to the time of Fajr. Then along came the companion Bilal. Bilal was the Mu'addin, the one who made the Adhan. So he came to the Prophet asking permission to give the adhan. And he saw the Prophet in the state. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, Lima tabki wa qad ghafar Allahu ma taqaddama min dhambik wa ma ta'akhar. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, Bilal speaking now, why are you crying? Allah forgave everything of your sins. What, what passed in the past, if there were any, there were none, but if there were any, Allah forgave everything. And anything that could possibly happen in the future, you're forgiven. You're the messenger of Allah. Why are you crying? He couldn't understand. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa he said to Bilal, Ya Bilal, he said to him, Afala akuna abdan shakura. He said, Oh Bilal, 
Shouldn't I be a grateful slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Shouldn't I, even if Allah forgave everything, even if I'm the messenger of Allah, should I not be grateful? And he said, Wallahi laqad nazalat alayya layla ayatun fawailun liman qara'aha wa lam yatafakkar wa fiha. He said, tonight some verses were revealed to me. Woe unto the one who reads these verses and he doesn't reflect over them. And these are the verses where Allah says, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Verily in the creation of the heavens and the night, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, in the alternation of the night and the day, are signs for those who reflect. So my brothers and sisters, one of the most emotional scenes from the life of the Prophet, and I have yet to see one incident where the Prophet cried more than this incident, not even at the death of his children. There's no description of him crying as much as he was crying on this night. But what was the emotion that made him cry? He was praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, enjoying his prayer. But what was it really about? Afala akuna abdan shakura. He wanted to be grateful. He was so overwhelmed by the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he wanted to be grateful. And he became emotional. So gratitude was what drove him. A shukr was what made the Prophet so emotional. We need to ask ourselves today, are we grateful? None of us has a more difficult life than the life of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You might say to yourself, you know what, but we're not, you know, they're not going through what we're going through. Or, you know, our life is very difficult, I just lost somebody. Or this is happening, or that is happening, I'm going through a divorce, I don't have a place to live. You know, this, when did this happen? This beautiful instance from the life, of, this page from the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was in Medina. This was in Medina, during times of difficulty. In Medina, the Prophet never rested. In Medina, the, Pro the Islamic State was in constant attack. Hardly few weeks went until there was another battle, another war, another intrigue, another way of destroying the Muslim. So their life was never stable in Medina. So don't tell me your life is difficult and being grateful is very hard for us. This happened in the midst of trials and tribulations. And the Prophet had the, in the middle of the night, he would get up and he would be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one's life is more difficult than ours, no matter how difficult times get, no matter what we're going through and all our brothers and sisters are going through, a shukr is one of the fundamental commands of, the, of, of our religion. So we need to be grateful. We enjoy so many blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can't even enumerate them. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا If you were to list the blessings that we enjoy, and this applies to every single one of us, those who lost their home, those who are homeless, those who are going through divorces, those who, whose parents are sick, those who lost someone, those who just buried a loved one, it doesn't matter. You're still enjoying so many blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you were to sit down and write them out, you would not be able to do so. And if you were to be grateful or try to say Alhamdulillah for every blessing, you would never finish. You would never finish. So my brothers and sisters, let's revive this Islamic teaching of being grateful, of shukr. And shukr is being grateful for what the blessings that we enjoy, the bounties that we enjoy. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are shakirin, among those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises in the Quran. And among those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises great rewards, وَسَنَجْزِ الشَّاكِرِينَ أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَمْ Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen amma ba'd So today we're looking at one of the basic Islamic commands Something we often neglect in our lives And none of us are exceptions to that Something sometimes we think is to the side And it applies to someone else and not us and that is the command, the commandment, the Islamic teaching of being grateful, of being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a shukr. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands shukr in the Quran. He says, Washkuru, Washkuru lillah, in kuntum iyahu ta'budun. Be grateful, exhibit shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if indeed you are worshipping Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, we saw that shukr, this teaching, this command made him emotional like no other command. And it, it drove him and exhibited who he was like nothing else. He also spent a lot of time teaching this command to his companions. One of his companions that was very beloved to him was Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him. One day, the Prophet ﷺ, he took Mu'adh, he put his hand on his shoulder, and he said to him, Ya Mu'adh, inni wallahi la uhibbuk. He said, Oh Mu'adh, wallahi, I swear by Allah, I love you. He put his hand on the shoulders of Mu'adh ibn Jabal, and he gave him this glad tidings. Can you imagine the messenger telling a human being that he loves him and swearing by Allah? So Mu'adh ibn Jabal, he became emotional and he said, Bi abi anta wa ummi ya Rasulullah, wa in, wa, wallahi inni uhibbuk. He said, I swear, may my mother and my father be ransomed for you. I love you as well. And then the Prophet, he had his hand still on his shoulder and he gave him some advice. He said, Ya Mu'adh, la tada' fi duburi kulli salatin an taqul. He said, Mu'adh, do something for me. Never forget to say at the end of every single one of your prayers the following. He said, make sure at the end of every one of your prayers you make the following supplication. And he said to him, Allahumma inni, a'in, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadati. A beautiful supplication. He said, say at the end of every one of your prayers, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadati. Which means, O oh Allah, help me to remember you. And help me to be grateful to you, a shukr. And help me to the best of your worship, the most beautiful of your worship. So this is a teaching on gratitude. Look at how the Prophet ﷺ is teaching his companions. With such love, with such emotional, the emotional connection. And then reminding him, look, do something for me. If you love me, do something for me. At the end of every one of your prayers, ask Allah for three things. Ask Allah that you has, have, gives you the tawfiq to remember him, dhikr. And ask Allah to give you the tawfiq to be grateful to him, a shukr. And ask Allah to ha you give you the tawfiq to worship him in the best way. Wa husni ibadati. What a beautiful supplication. And this supplication was so beautiful that when Mu'adh ibn Jabal used to teach his students, he would tell them also at the end of the, 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 the hadith, he would relate this hadith and he would tell them, he would tell his student who he's teaching the hadith, Inni uhibbuk. Faqul, and he would, give, he would say the same thing, I love you to a student, and make sure you say this at the end of every salah. And then their students did the same thing likewise, and this hadith was narrated with musalsalat. It's called Al Hadith Al Musalsal Bil Muhabba. It's a hadith that was narrated by our scholars at every link in the same way. By the student, by the teacher telling the student that he loves him. And reminding them and then relating this hadith. And reminding them to make this salah, this dua at the end of every salah. So when I received this hadith from my shaykh, Dr. Muhammad Akram Nadwi, he said the same thing to us. So this is a hadith that's transmitted in the same way. He told us that he loves us. And he reminded us to say the same dua. So we share this with the ummah today. That this is a legacy, a wasiyah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That he loves all of us. And he wants us to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are many ways to be grateful. But among the greatest ways is to say alhamdulillah. To say alhamdulillah. The Quran begins with alhamdulillah. Surah Al-Fatiha begins with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the most important thing, that's a profound lesson for us. The most important thing, the first words that begin the Qur'an are words that show us how to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us all be grateful. Let us say alhamdulillah as much as we can. Let us look at our lives and find ways and find those blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we enjoy and be grateful to, for them. To say alhamdulillah, to make salah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to pray to Him, to supplicate to Him. 
and to remind each and every one of us to be grateful. Don't be like what Allah says, وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ How few of our servants are those who are grateful, who show shukr. Don't be like those few. The majority of human beings, unfortunately, they're not grateful. By nature, we're ungrateful. But we have to remind each other to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes when you talk to each other and you, you ask each other, how are you doing? Instead of you know, showing gratitude or saying alhamdulillah, we say other things, you know what, I'm being tested. You know what, this is happening. You know what, I'm going through this, I need help. Say alhamdulillah in every situation. Every situation that you go through, be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us be among those who say alhamdulillah, those who are who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dhakirin, those who are shakirin, those who are grateful to Him in every situation and every circumstance. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa rizukna tiba'a wal batila batila wa rizukna ajtinaba Allahumma tawafana muslimin wa alhikna bil salihin ghayra khazaya wa la maftunin Allahumma aslih lana deenana alladhi huwa ismatu amrina wa aslih lana dunyana alati fiha ma'ashina wa aslih lana akhiratan alati ilayha ma'adina wa ja'alil hayata ziyadatan lana min kulli khayr wal mawta rahatan lana min kulli shar Allahumma akfila bi halalika an haramik wa aghnina bi fadlika amman siwak Allahumma amin wa akhiru da'wana an ilhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Yeah. Uh-huh.